So the range would be 0 included all the way up to 1. I can get half of a circle as the graph of a function, right? And I can get the other half of a circle as the graph of another function, right? I'll make it red. So like to get the other half down here, I just add this half, right? And that, that I would have y equals minus the square root of 1 minus x squared. They would have the same domain, but the range now would be what? 0 to, well, well, minus 1 to 0 would be the range of this one. So let me call this g of x since I don't want to confuse it with f. But the range of g would be minus 1 to 0. And they, they meet at the equator, glue together to give you the whole circle. But this is kind of like generally the story. If you have, an, if you have a graph of an equation, you can break it up into like graphs of functions, but you have to like use a bunch of functions to get the whole graph of an equation because like the equations usually have like they kind of like double back and they have some like they'll fail the vertical line test in places. So have to pass the vertical line test. Now. Let's look at some kind of easier questions. Well, I don't know if they're easy or not, but they're a little bit different. So let me share with you our custom. If given a formula f of x, we make the domain of f as big as possible inside the real numbers. In our course, that is our, our uh, well, our ninja way, let's say. Um, so example, if I tell you f of x is equal to 1 over x, what's the domain? So the domain of this would be x such that x is not equal to 0, right? We just have to avoid division by 0, otherwise the formula makes sense. Could we write that in interval notation? I think we could. It would be minus infinity to 0 union with 0 to infinity in interval notation. How about the next one? The next one is an example of what's called a quadratic polynomial function because its formula is given by a quadratic polynomial. Which x does that formula make sense for? What real numbers can you square, multiply by 3, and subtract 2 from? Which real numbers can we do this, this sequence of arithmetic on? Like, what real numbers can we square the real number and then add three times that number and then subtract two from? Like, is there any real number where we can't do that? No. Right, so the domain in this case is no strings attached. The domain is just the whole real line, just that. So sometimes it's just that simple. Right. Another example, we could have f of x equals 1 over the square root of x minus 1. What do we need in order for the square root of x minus 1 to be real? We need x minus 1 to be greater than or equal to 0 for the square root to make sense, right? Can we allow, 
Can we allow equals to zero there, though? Think about it. We can't, right? Because we're dividing by it. So we better erase that equals because it's going to get us into trouble. It's going to give us division by zero if we leave it in. So we better just have x minus 1 greater than 0, which is also known as what? x greater than 1, right? So the domain of f is 1 to infinity, 1 not included. I wanted, I wanted to hear the rest. It sounded exciting, but um, it's okay. Um, sorry, I'll, I'll shut up. Example, um, how about, what if we had something like f of x equals to, um, you know, uh, 1 over x plus 1 over x minus 1? What would the domain of this one be? So we, we need what? We need x not equal to 0 and x not equal to 1 for formula happy. So we just have, we, we would say x such that x is not equal to 0 or 1. In terms of intervals, that's minus infinity to 0, union with 0 to 1, union with 1 to infinity again. That would be the, the domain and interval notation. Because we have to exclude 0 and 1. It forces us to write three intervals. You, do, you, don't, you don't believe it? Here's the number line, right? So we've got 0 excluded, and we've got 1 excluded. So if you think about it, there are three cases, right? There's like minus infinity to 0 this guy. You got your, you got your, no, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's good, it's good. Your thinking, thinking is, thinking is always appreciated. Uh, one to infinity, that's this guy. That's why there's three there. All numbers except for zero and one, yeah. Now, so, you have, of course, more homework like this, right? Given a formula, make the domain as big as you can. Be greedy, right? Now, there's one other kind of question that I think is even, even nicer, which is sometimes we'll give you a picture of the function and ask you to figure out its domain and range. So suppose you're given, here's your picture. This is, say, uh, minus 2. Um, minus 1, you had a line segment, it goes up here to, say, 1, um, one, one, 1, I don't know. And then um, you've got a point here, and um, then there's one other point over here, um, 2, comma, 1. All right, and what we're looking at is the graph y equals f of x. What's the domain? So my, is minus 2 included or excluded? See that open circle there? That means it's not in the graph, so we exclude minus 2. And this, see that one? So what this dot here tells me, and I, let's put that dot at 1 comma 3. That dot being on the graph tells me that f of 1 equals to 3. So 1 is included, so, but be careful. I didn't give anything in the graph between 1 and 2. So it's weird. It's this union with the set just containing 2. That's the domain. The range. is minus 1 up to 1 included unioned with 3. Those are the possible outputs. Those are the possible inputs. But I think these are the easiest kind of questions because all you have to do is look at the graph and read from the graph possible inputs. Those are the x values it hits, possible outputs. 
So those are, those are the y values that the graph actually runs into. And that's all there is to it. Anyway, I shut up for now. See you guys when? Wednesday. Wednesday. All right. Same bat time, same bat channel. Oh, I'm sorry. That's from another generation. That's not even from my generation. It's from a generation best less forgot, left, left, left forgotten. Yeah, I'll turn this camera off here. <laughs>